The phone conversation between fantasy veterans Bob Harris and Matt Waldman is a quick and dirty rundown of players, units, or teams from Sunday's games. Feel it or fuck it is our instant verdict on the fantasy value of a player or situation, not the ability, effort, or character of the player. This is just how two old-timers in this industry talk when they got a lot of cover in a little time. Good morning, Matt Waldman. Welcome to the Double Digit Weeks, but let's dissect the last of the single digits. Week nine. Uh, feeling it. Uh, you feeling it? You <laughs> like that one, did you? I don't know. Nine, nine's always a good number, but that's because it's Steve McNair, and I was always feeling Steve McNair. Now, are you feeling Patrick Mahomes as if his career ended today? Patrick Mahomes, Hall of Fame. Are you feeling that? Well, so, yes, I'm feeling it because, I mean, he's been phenomenal. So if we're saying it ended, you know, this, if it would just end it, right? Yeah. Just, I think there would be an uprising. Number one, Twitter would, you know, get out the pitchforks and torches and, and run their 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 work on, on whoever decides these things. But we've seen guys like who have injury shortened careers in the past. Tony Boselli most recently got in. And, uh, but I mean, I think the level of accomplishment alone, uh, you know, would merit, <laughs> this discussion and it, like you know the voters are stodgy old folks like me and it may you know for the most part and it may take a little it might not be as easy as i think it should be um i would give it to him just for the fact that he got a half billion dollar contract hell that, that's a win for me yeah i was i was feeling it two years ago i mean so i and but i understand those who who want to look at the numbers and feel important feel like that they have an important role as gatekeepers to something that they should not be gatekeepers for but I, that's I, you know to me maybe it is fuck the hall of fame voters because they they shouldn't be the gatekeepers but then again i look at players and the way they are as gatekeepers in the nfl top 100 and right. for the most part i hear he's big he's fast Look how quick he is. And only like the, the select few seem to have a clue about like what really made that player the as good as how they are. So maybe it comes down to that maybe we need the Hall of Fame players in existence now to be the gatekeepers. But then then I think about some of them and I'm not so sure about that either. I, th I think most of us are our own personal gatekeepers and we consider people whatever we consider them. And I think for the most part, Patrick Mahomes, I mean, AFC championships, the MVP, Super Bowl. I mean, you know, check all the boxes. I you just like I was looking just like even at last night's game, and I was just checking some of the tweets, just you know, not to get off the rails too much, but like Pete Sweeney and my buddy from Arrowhead Pride said, Patrick Mahomes just took over this game like an NBA superstar. He did, right? How often do you see a single mm -hmm. player just go in? He had a uh, first uh, Chiefs player, first Chiefs player with back to back 400 yard passing games, counted for 82%. Of the team's rushing yards, the fifth core highest percentage by a quarterback ever in the last 20 seasons. I mean, you know, these are the kind of accomplishments that you know happen moment to moment, week to week during the course of a season. But but he's made these kind of uh, you know these kind of efforts the norm. I think you know in our minds, in my mind anyway, there's no way he's anything but a Hall of Famer. When when Jeffrey Simmons, who basically hates the Kansas City Chiefs because they apparently, according to the broadcast, the team felt like that the Titans felt like that the Chiefs just kicked their ass last year and they were they they came in pretty pumped up for this and were playing pretty physical football to watch Patrick Mahomes just kind of put a move on Jeffrey Simmons that I haven't seen running backs or wide receivers do very well maybe not at the speed that you right. would expect you know because I, I I jokingly tweeted he's you know or I didn't jokingly tweet but I said you know is he fast not really you know is he strong nope you know but you know, did he just put a move on Simmons that most most ball carries would envy made him eat the turf? Yeah. And that didn't even have to go with like the shortstop superimposed onto quarterback play that he that he does on a regular base basis that is just incredible. I mean, even even the high point throw to, to Noah Gray was a <laughs> was a thing of beauty. I went back and watched it a few times. And I thought that's exactly where it needed to be, too. I mean, like at first, I thought maybe that was one of those throws that people complain. Noah about. Gray, Noah Gray, or as I call him, future Travis Kelsey, playing with Pat Mahomes. <laughs> right, right. But so, and that was after the one he made to Travis Kelsey, where Kelsey made an incredible catch. But the throw itself was still like getting clipped at the ankle and falling as he's making it. He again looked like a shortstop trying to turn a double play at second base while someone was sliding into his legs. You know, I mean, that's 
That's how it looks. It's fantastic. I needed a way to Patrick start Mahomes my day. love fest. Feel We're it. Feeling it. it. Fuck it. Totally. Move it over. No, Move feeling it. it. <laughs> but Move it ahead. Because now we got to go to Malik Willis. Fantasy oh, value no. short term. No. no. Yeah. <laughs> he has none of it. He has none of that short term. Until, you know, yeah, until they start giving him a little more. We're going to talk about Justin Fields, I know. A little more of the uh, evolution of this offense. And they allow him. You know, he got the uh, Justin Fields early season treatment and has for two games. And I know Salty Mike Brable out there somewhere is going to yell at me if I point out that why don't you let this guy throw the football? You drafted him to be a quarterback, sir. Uh, so, <laughs> like, this is, you know, this is the issue. I, I, you know, short term, totally fuck it. I mean, well, no. Totally feeling it because I'm way invested in Derrick Henry. And uh, and the, every time Malik Willis plays, it's going to be a win for for Derrick Henry because that's the offense. But but beyond that, I, I, I you know, long term, I question whether this is going to be the coaching staff that's going to develop this quarterback. Yeah, I'm, I, I would say other than Derrick Henry, fuck it. Just because in the pocket, the difference between he and Lamar Jackson is partially scheme for sure. But the other part of it is that he is a hard cutting, violent cutting runner who tends to try to cut back inside into traffic on a regular basis and doesn't have the quickness Lamar Jackson has. Now, people need to understand the difference between speed, quickness, and acceleration. Does he have Lamar Jackson speed? Check. Yes. Does he have his acceleration? Absolutely. Can he change direction as quickly as Lamar Jackson, no. And the difference in that often leads to him getting hit by 270 to 320 pounds. That's guys. not good for him. No. He's a big man, though. Yes. <laughs> He's a big man. It's not, but it's not good for him. And all the things that I that I that I say, fuck, fuck that trash, which is Trent Green, the tortoise, talking about how this type of stuff will wear down on quarterbacks' careers if they run too much. And he's talking about guys like Lamar Jackson or Kyler Murray. And you're looking at those guys and saying they they never get hit. Justin Fields, he did that with Justin Fields this whole time, who we talk about right now. Is he a top five quarterback by year's end? Because I'm saying, <clears throat> fuck Trent Green's. I'm a, I'm a quarterback, and I remember what it was like business because – you don't remember what it was like. You got hit so much and sometimes so violently and you are not a you weren't uh you were playing a different position than than Justin Fields. I mean right. same same position but, right, but different, different different spectrum. Different game. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Uh Justin Fields top 5 rest of the season. Uh Neither feeling nor fucking it. I mean, uh, totally, totally. <laughs> no, open you to gotta it. totally. No, fuck open that. To, you gotta, go. <laughs> you gotta do one or the other, my man. To, uh, to, uh, feel semi feeling, feeling it, feeling it a little bit. <laughs> Look, I mean, it's the <laughs> rushing equity, right? From, from a fantasy perspective, right? From a fantasy perspective, yeah. you know, and uh, you know, I'll nod, tip of the cat to Rich Rebar. The Konami Code quarterbacks are are the magic uh, elixir of fantasy football, and he's demonstrated that since week six. By the way, that loss to Washington, uh, you know, he has been super productive. And whether it's the coaching staff has, uh, you know, uh, unleashed him a little more, and I think they have and in terms of passing attack. They added another weapon. Good for them. I don't know if that's the the weapon that's a game changer, Chase Claypool, but he's a weapon. It's like all of a sudden they decided, wow, maybe we should give this guy some help. Um, but <clears throat> also they started letting him throw a little more, and so that's good for him. But the rushing equity will, will keep him in the discussion as other players that we considered – you know, maybe locked in, certainly locked in top 10 players fall out of that. Another weapon who can go deep. They have a, the, the play action game is working very well. And he did well against a Cowboys defense. It's pretty tough. Yes. And so following up with what he did against Miami was not much of a surprise in terms of what you would expect. So will he make the top five? Who knows? But the fact that we're both feeling the idea that he could be a top five guy if pressed, you know, then then that tells you that he's heading in the right direction. All right, let's kick this into overdrive. Denzel Mims, bi week appeal for you, feeling or fuck it? Feel it. <laughs> no, honestly. <laughs> so just eyeball test wise, I mean, the you know, just happen to catch, you know, whether it's red zone or whatever, just a, a handful of plays. You think, oh, this guy probably could play if they gave him opportunities. Uh, you know, generally speaking, uh, fuck Jets receivers. Um, but I mean, you know, it, Buys are a tough thing, and attrition is is treacherous. Ask the uh, Los Angeles Chargers. you got to deal with that uh, from time to time. And also ask fantasy managers invested 
and those top receivers. So, you know, <clears throat> if you get in a situation, who was I'm trying to think of the worst player I played this week, and Denzel Mims might be better than them. There you go. I'm feeling it because watching that game, Zach Wilson just missed him by a hair yes. about four uh, times on huge plays. <laughs> yep. So I'm totally feeling the idea that it's coming because um, Corey Davis is hurt. So I think the opportunity is there. Michael yeah, that's Carter. That's a factor to me. That's yeah. a factor. I think Davis will be back after the bye. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Then, then then we got troubles. Michael Michael Carter, feeling that. James Robinson with it yeah, in there. Yeah. I feel that. I feel both of them. I mean, you know, these are tough times, people. Uh, we're heading in. We have another 16 buy on in week of 14 that we're all going to be looking at players like Michael Carter as gold. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, players with a workload and a pulse, uh, both those things uh, are qualifying factors to get me to feel them a little bit at this time of year. Uh, but don't go overboard, kids. Yeah, quick, quick, listen, quickness to the to the edge, breaks tackles, catches the football, always feeling that from a player getting the playing time he's not going to get eclipsed by James Robinson he might get he might you know have someone even with him in touches but I don't think James Robinson is going to totally eclipse Michael Carter um but what about Jeff Wilson Raheem Mostert where are you on that well if I'm feeling Michael Carter and James Robinson I'm definitely feeling both of these guys play the one you got hope you don't have both of them it's going to be an impossible weekly decision uh, you know, I've said this before when they were both in San Francisco, you know, I have to look carefully at the number when I see a ball carrier running in San Francisco, or I did when both those guys were playing, they look very similar. They have very similar games and some characteristics and they seem to be well suited to the offense. So, uh, this is going to be a tough weekly decision. If you have both of them, if you have one of them, you might end up disappointed, but not so much so as if you, uh, fight somebody who wasn't playing. So I'm, I'm feeling them for what they are uh, in a, in a timeshare in a, in a very effective offense. Yeah, I would definitely say, Hey, I'm feeling it. Mike, Mike McDaniel scouted Jeff Wilson. That was an assignment for him was to scout, find some players during the off season that they could, they could sign or draft late. And Jeff Wilson was his pet project. So now that we know that definitely feeling it from what we saw, he immediately made the adjustment this week, looked very good both from pass blocking, running, catching the football, you're all good there. Mostert still looked fine to me. I don't think he's going to he's going to lose a ton, but he lost the ton of potential that he had for liftoff um when they got when it was just Chase Edmonds sitting on the bench for most of the time. Julio Jones, though, are you feeling Julio Jones? Uh, feeling him as a roster hold as we get, you know, closer to the end of the season and further attrition sets in. Uh, you know, look, there are brief moments when Tom Brady looks like he can still Tom Brady a little bit. And uh, we saw one of those <laughs> yesterday, you know, at the end of that game. We also see a lot of receivers there dropping passes that they have no business dropping. Uh, I'm looking at you, Scotty Miller. And others like Mike Evans. Okay, I'm, you know, I'm not going to pick on not going to pick on everybody, but but honestly, uh, it's a good sure-handed receiver down the stretch is going to come in handy. Uh, and again, only if you have roster room, though. I mean, it's you know, he's kind of a you know, he's not someone you're going to want to be forced. Otherwise, fuck it. Time. Yes. Otherwise, fuck it. Yeah, yes. because it, because one out of every five plays, he's going to break down and have to limp off to the boundary from the same injuries and same issues. Um, that he had in Atlanta late in his career there, and it's only going to get worse. So, I mean, so among hateful. other things that go on it. So hateful. I love Julio Jones, the player, but, yeah, right now from a fantasy standpoint, yeah, I hate it. Um, TJ Hawkinson, top three tight end the rest of the year now that he's a Viking. He looks like the Minnesota Vikings. He looks like a Viking. Skull! Fuck that. No, he's not. I mean, look, he had a good week in Detroit, too. I mean, he had a good week here. Okay. He might, he's going to have good weeks, right? And maybe yeah. the opportunity, the, the chances of having good weeks are, are, maybe they'll be more, maybe not. I mean, it's, a, you know, it's good supporting casts in both situations. Uh, I think, uh, I think obviously top 10. I mean, you know, I'm going to play him probably every week if I have him. Uh, I don't know that he'll rise up to top three, though. But he, there, I mean, there, will there be occasions? Absolutely. Feeling top five, fuck it, top three. Damian Pierce over Jonathan Taylor for the rest of the season. All day long. Uh, yeah, I mean, one's healthy and running very hard. One is not healthy and on a team that's obviously tanking and just fired its head coach moments before we started this podcast. Uh, and <laughs> and by the way, kudos to me. I, I think I, how many times have I mentioned that? Like every week I wake up and I go, why does Frank Reich still have a job? I mean, no, all due respect to Frank Reich, but just the way they're, you know, approaching things in Indy, I just could not imagine Jim Irsay 
uh, putting up with this long. And I thought it way earlier in the season when they were losing the teams that, you know, they have a bad history against and things like that. I'm just going, this, is, this is not going to sit well with Jim Irsay. And maybe were Jim Irsay not so distracted with trying to run Daniel Snyder out of the league, maybe it would have already happened. And kudos to him for all his uh, strong efforts. But um, <clears throat> in this case, this is just, a you know, whether you're invested in Jonathan Taylor, Michael Pittman, and probably that's the extent of everyone's investment at the moment. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be a rough road ahead, I think. Yeah, it's tough. I mean, it's fascinating because Russ Landy and I had this conversation last week, and 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 the gist of it was, you know, firing Marcus Brady was a huge question mark. Why did they do that? And maybe they were trying to buy some time because they – Ursay <laughs> just earlier this year said – they were in it for the long haul. He felt really comfortable with where everything was going. Yep. But this was the third veteran quarterback that didn't work out. And when you let go two offensive linemen and Glowinski and Fisher and you feel that impact, um, then he said, by the way, that Chris plan. Ballard, by yeah. the way, Chris Ballard. Yes. By the way, Chris <laughs> Ballard, that's, that's not working. Um, you know, fuck that plan. We're, we're done with this and we may be done with you, which is, you know, which is too bad because there's a lot of good things that yeah, were that were absolutely. going on. They built a team on the precipice and then got rid of the foundation, which was ugh. or the foundation got rid of them. That's true. That too. That too. So the lack of foundation. Kadarius Tony this year. I'm feeling it? It this year? No, I'm not yeah, feeling it. Same here. Again, you know, going back to Patrick Mahomes, uh, not not to say NFL Hall of Famer, but a fantasy analyst Hall of Famer like me. Um, he's told us, he's told us what's going on, right? He says that you're never going to know week to week. It's going to be a different guy. There'll, there'll be a Darius Tony week, undoubtedly at some point. And, and, uh, just like there has been a Nicole Hardman week and there will be Juju Smith Schuster weeks and MVS is going to get a turn at some point. It's that's how it's going to be. So expecting, you know, consistent production from any of these guys is, uh, is a reach according to the great fantasy expert of our era, Patrick Mahomes. So maybe what that means is that you, you, you say fuck it to the lottery ball or to the power ball, but you do feel the machine that the manufacturer yeah. of the machines. Yeah, absolutely. So I think that makes total sense. Tyler Algier, Algier, excuse me, Algier, because fuck Tyler Algier. I don't know who that is. <laughs> yeah. Tyler um, Algier. I, so I'm, this is it, this one interests me because I know you don't like him that much. Come okay. on, go ahead and admit. But I, uh, from a fantasy perspective, I thought Cordero Patterson returned. You know, I thought they'd slow roll Patterson a little bit. They did not, but they don't slow roll anything in the running game. And that's what keeps the value of Tyler Algier uh, alive. And uh, we saw it was a pretty robust role considering uh, Patterson, you know, and Patterson got touchdowns. Okay. Maybe Algier will get his turn at that. But again, as we head down the stretch run, these are treacherous times, fantasy managers. Uh, don't leave yourself short of capable bodies at running back, or at least bodies that will help you avoid a zero because not all of them do. Yeah, well, there you go. I'll just put it to you this way. One week it's Al Algier, one week it's Huntley, so fuck that. But I know every week it's the pain train with Cordero Patterson it will for be, as long man. as he stays healthy. Ooh, so that I, guy. Yeah. I'm good with that. I'm 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 feeling Arthur in. Smith for making that guy work, man. How many how many coaches, including Bill Belichick, could not make that guy work? Yeah. Couldn't figure out what he did well. Bill had the right idea. He did yeah, use he him did. on toss and he, he started did. doing that. And then somebody goes, Well, why don't we do that all the time? But that's because I think he coincided well with all the two high looks and they th said, Wait a minute, we could do this on every play. You know, why not? So I I, I hear you. Bill so Bill was prophetic when he said I'm going to make you I'm going to make you what you should have been in this league for all these years. He just didn't keep him to to make that true in New England. But they do have Ramondre Stevenson. Is he a running back one for the rest of the season or are you feeling worried that. about you're feeling that? Yeah, me too. Feel that. Like I'm I'm all I'm all about the Harrises in this league uh and we're coming up short. I'm looking at you, Damian. Looking at you, Najee. It's it's okay, man. <laughs> We've all had down years. I've had many of them in my life, so uh, and you rebound mightily, Alex Harris is due. But in the meantime, uh, Ramondre Stevenson, you know, looks like he does everything. And I can remember talking to you about Ramondre Stevenson when he came out of college, you know, that he was not just a big body guy. He had a little more to his game. And clearly he does. Yes, he does. Let's do I, I totally agree. Anybody who can make the catches he makes, I'm, I'm good with, especially with the way he runs through the faces of defensive linemen, as the great Marshawn Lynch would say. James Connor, feeling it? 
feel him. Fuck you, Cliff Kingsbury. Uh, <laughs> I said politely. No, it's just like th- yeah. this team seems like, you know, just snake bitten, right? Yeah. They just can't get it right. And so, again, I'll just go back to watching the game and, and watching James Conner's plays. He was fine. I mean, you know, he ran hard. He put a lot of effort into it. He had reasonable results. It just didn't get the heavy usage that we'd like to see. And that's part of that is because this – team goes off the rails they shoot themselves in the foot with mistakes and errors and bad judgments and and you know well just a, a whole range of issues that they just can't seem to get past and and i put that all at the feet of the fancy guy at the top you cliff yeah if i had to take if, if we look at the past got people on the list we just talked about he definitely fuck him compared to damian pierce definitely fuck him compared to Ramondre stevenson but if you're looking at Kadarius tony and tyler Al algier Algier, Algier, fuck that I don't know this already, um, then I would feel James Conner. Zach Ertz, though, top three tight end rest of the season. He's a top three tight end right now. Are you feeling it? Uh, the targets will be there. i feeling it barely, right? I mean, I, look, I'm heavily invested in him, so I'm hoping that comes to pass. I think, you know, I think once you get past the top two, and maybe just the top one right now, unless Mark Andrews gets healthy, and we'll see how that plays out. I mean, you, you know, there's two players at that position when you watch them play who don't look like they play that position. And Make that's it. Travis Travis Kelsey and Mark Andrews. They look like yeah. a different thing. Um, but among the tight ends, you got Zach Ertz, Dallas Goddard. I'll go ahead and throw in your guy, TJ Hawkinson. I think all those guys look like something a little bit different. There may be others that are right up there in the top of that uh Top in that top group that maybe deserves some credit from you know similar credit. I mean Gerald Everett plays pretty well, you know, but but for the most part, uh, trustworthy wise, uh, you know Travis Kelsey's right in there in the circle. What you're telling me, what you're telling me is pinning Bob Harris down to a, a specific number in a range right now. Fuck that. Fuck that. Yes. So we're done with that part of it. So anyone other than Devonte Adams or Foster Moreau in Vegas, you feeling the <clears throat> uh, idea of anybody else? I don't feel enough. half of that. I don't feel Foster Moreau. I, I feel Devontae Adams. I, look, I, I, you're going to keep playing Josh Jacobs, and 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 I, I'm okay with that because I'm fine playing the volume, uh, because we've seen the high end results. But generally speaking, there's nobody else on that. Did team I just say trusting. Foster Moreau instead of Josh Jacobs? I even you wrote did. that down. That's that's scary. Okay, well, hey, late nights. Fuck that. Foster Aaron- Moreau seems like a great guy, but I don't trust him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't trust them in fantasy either. But Aaron Rodgers, rest of the season, are you trusting that? Feeling that? Um, not trusting it or feeling. Uh, you, but but again, you know, if you drafted him and you don't want to throw him away, and there's slim pickings in your, you know, in your, on your waiver wire. I mean, you know, fuck throwing him away too. I mean, he's still going to put up some production, and uh, you know, it's, it's better than PJ like, Walker, I guess, right? right? I started PJ Walker in a league yesterday <laughs> out of too. desperation Me in that too, minus in one point four league. points in a two quarterback league. I got minus, minus three. one point four was not great, <laughs> but um, but yes, exactly for that reason, right? Because there's you know there just in a two quarterback league, job security is almost as important as as being productive, and and you also have the bonus of Aaron Rodgers occasionally, uh, perhaps turning into Aaron Rodgers for brief moments, and and uh, at other moments where he's going to throw interceptions in the red zone. Uh, on multiple occasions. Listen, fuck that roster clogging Jeopardy host in one quarterback leagues. That's all I You're got horrible. to say. Well, yeah, yeah, nobody's playing him there. That's what, yeah, that's the point. So, <laughs> Jamal Williams him. over the Andre Swift rest of the season. All day long. All day long. I'll tell you, know, so it reminds me, uh, you know, uh, when you're working out, right? And you, you know, there's a, there's a great theory behind this. You know, you don't max out, never max out, max out like maybe once a month, right? because you can have that consistent production every day. And that's very important. By the end of the year, you've done way more than the guy who has these huge flash big days and then has to rest for a week uh, because he's so sore he can't work out after that huge max out day. Uh, DeAndre Swift is a huge max out guy. Jamal Williams is guy who works out every damn day. You're going to make me McFarlane really <clears throat> upset, um, but that's all right. We can deal with that. So I agree with you about Jamal Williams. He gets the... He, he does a little bit of everything, and he does the red zone looks, and he gets more of everything than Swift. And Swift's hurt right now. So the fact that right, Swift's hurt right now, they're giving him the shot. So so feeling their fuck it, you and I could sack Sam Mellinger at least once with that Colts offensive line. Um, Both of us together, yes, uh, feeling that. I'm feeling that idea too. Now, 
you know that was a lie. We totally could not sack him. That's probably true. It's kind of like that whole if you had a hundred attempts to to tackle Derrick Henry, <laughs> you know how many. I don't want though. I don't want a hundred. I don't want a hundred chances <laughs> think, to tackle. Derrick I think Henry, I think if you and I had one chance to tackle Derrick Henry in a sanctioned NFL game, that 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 league is going out of business. That's <laughs> that's where that's going. Might be very entertaining. It might be very entertaining. Now if we could if we get Ryan Riddle behind us. Um, running rough shot behind us, I think we'd have a we'd have a chance, but only if he ping ponged us into Derrick Henry, oh my God. and that that would feel painful. Hopefully, this wasn't too painful for you for for everybody, but uh, you know. All right, let's that. get back to work. Love All you, right, bye. bye.